Good evening and welcome to another week of In the Spotlight with Tabitha Collins. Hi, I'm Tabitha Collins. Uh, thank you so much for joining us on this evening. Um, tonight we have a very special guest. Um, we are going to dive into some topics that I really believe will be beneficial for the community uh, here in Charlotte, uh, North Carolina and beyond. I have Mr. Keon Lewis with us this evening. Mr. Lewis is a graduate with a bachelor's in science uh, in biology. He has a master's in health services administration, and he is a equality equity coordinator. He is a equity coordinator for one of our local um, facilities here in this Charlotte area and surrounding. And he is also heavily involved in social action and equity advocacy. Mr. Lewis, Keon, thank you so much for joining us tonight on the spotlight. Hey, thank you for the invite and um, I greatly appreciate it. So um, tell our viewers a little bit because our show, um, you, well, you might not know, is broadcast, you know, on, you know, in Charlotte and all around the globe. Someone in Australia could be actually watching this show. So we want to also share this information so it can get out to uh, them across seas as well. Explain to us exactly what your title is and what, what does that look like? What does that entail? So um, we can uh, share that with the viewers. Yeah, absolutely. So as an equ equity coordinator in public health, I look at things from an equity lens and the scope of the work is twofold. So the first thing is, what am I doing to ensure that equity exists within my organization? Am I giving my employees and staff members an opportunity to feel like they have value in the organization? Are the policies fair? Do they feel like they have a platform to engage and share their ideas and their thoughts and their opinions and their strategies to make us a better organization? Then the second aspect is what am I doing as a leader to help advance equity in our community, especially when it comes to health equity. And as we know, with the pandemic, a lot of the inequities that existed in our communities, you know, it, it became more public and it became more prevalent. And so in doing that scope of work, we work diligently with not only, you know, our own respective departments, but also with local community organizations and collaborative opportunities to address the needs of the community to see what are the you know initial disparities that they're experiencing but also put strategies in place so that at the cusp of the pandemic we can make sure that we work diligently to improve their health outcomes and to make things accessible regardless of their race their ethnicity their socioeconomic status because when we talk about equity there's a difference between equity and equality equality states that we give the exact same amount of resources to everyone. And oftentimes we, you know, as we all know, that's not necessarily a successful outcome for the community. But with equity, it makes sure that we give all of the necessary outcomes so that everyone can have a successful outcome, regardless of the additional financial support that it needs, the additional resources that it needs. It wants to ensure that everyone, regardless of their race, their status, et cetera, are able to have successful and healthy outcomes. So as an equity coordinator, I, I work diligently to make sure that things are accomplished, not only internally, but also externally in the scope of public health. And that's what I was gonna ask you. I was gonna say, um, I know you, I'm, I'm sure handle that internally, but I was gonna ask you, what, did the, what does that look like externally? Um, yeah, so, so an example of that is, you know, one of the things that I've helped work to develop through my organization is what we consider as an equity advisory council. And what this does is that it creates a platform for us to directly speak with members of the community, whether it's a nonprofit organization, a community association, neighborhood affiliates, you know, representatives of that neighborhood, whatever it may be, it gives them a platform so that we can speak directly to them to know exactly what their needs are and how to target it. So for example, we had a community association in which we collaborated with and we discussed about, you know, the availability of the COVID vaccine as well as the at-home COVID testing kits and masks. And so what we learned from them was that we had a, a large population of seniors who may not have necessarily had access to the internet and other tools to be able to order those supplies. So we directly collaborated with them, ordered the supplies for them, got it to them, made sure it got to their addresses so that we were able to meet those needs. So when we look at equity in the scope of the community and, and how we made sure to advance it, 
those are some of the steps that we take to have those platforms to communicate directly to the community and not wait until you know an annual survey to get those you know answers that we need we're doing it in real time and having those honest conversations so that way we know exactly the best way to support and and you know what else i noticed during the pandemic because i found myself doing this i i gave some homeless people some masks you know because they didn't have there was a man he was standing and he was panhandling and he had on you know you know a very unclean mask you right. know and I gave him some money and i gave him you know a couple of masks because i think that they were lost in the shuffle mm -hmm. the pandemic and um, I want to speak a little bit about because this is something that is very important. And now, you know, in my own personal career, um, I have noticed, and it's been a taboo topic in the Black community for as far back as I can remember, is the state of the mental health and um, not just the Black community, but the community uh, overall. But I've Absolutely. also noticed. Uh, and what I guess I want the viewers to understand is that this is a topic that was very taboo in, you know, African American culture. You know, it was tab. You know, you keep your business in the house. You know, you don't. You know, um, if Uncle June Bug's crazy, then he's just. You know, we we thought he was just crazy, but now I realize Uncle June Bug has some mental issues, and yep. um, we didn't go to the counselors and we took it to the Lord in prayer, and you know, and we left it there and. Those are just things that now that I'm in that arena, I see that um, it is really something that needs to be addressed. I so agree. Speak a little bit about mental health because I I'm just astonished of the of, of the people I've I've run into. I out. think um, you've hit the nail perfectly on the head. Mental health is very serious. It is a much necessary dialogue that we have to continue to have. We have to look at mental wellness the same way we look at total wellness because it is, you know, as as the mind goes, so so does the body. And the thing that I've learned in my scope of work, not only in public health but also as an advocate for mental health, you know, I have the opportunity of serving as the chair for the North Carolina Board of Directors for the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention. And awesome. one of the chief things that we do is making sure that we have these opportunities, the resources, just to make sure that we have the conversations about mental health, let alone suicide. And as you perfectly stated, when we look at the direct impact that this pandemic has had on the community, especially in the black community, it is significant. And the time is now to have these honest conversations about our own mental health, about our families, about in the workplace. And that's something that is good to see that more dialogue is taking place because you know, let's be honest, it's the stigma behind it. You know, no one wants to be known as having some type of issue or some type of diagnosis because of those terms. And that someone says that they're crazy or that they're insane and all of these things that kind of puts them in such a negative place that it forces people not to even discuss it. You know, we can look at everything from the impact that it's had on your common everyday workers to athletes, to celebrities and actresses and actors. And, you know, as we both know, we've lost a lot of significant individuals over the course of these past few years, not only through the pandemic, but prior to. And it has caused the scope and the, the spotlight to be placed more on mental health. So when I think about the work that's being done with AFSP and with organizations like MHA, you know, Mental Health Americas, as well as NAMI, you know, the National Association for Mental Illness and other nonprofit organizations and the great work that they're doing, there's still more, more work to be done. And as we all know, you know, with the Black community, it is something that in often and traditionally, we never really talked about, you know, this is something that we want to take to the Lord and pray about, and hopefully Big Mama can provide the answers. But as we all know, Big Mama's not always going to have the answers for that. And it's okay to not be okay. And we want to make sure that we get those services that we need, that we seek out those resources, and that we make sure that we have those honest conversations. And one of the things that I'm extremely proud about that I'm happy to support, especially as a member of Omega Sci-Fi Fraternity Incorporated, is our own mental health initiative, Brother, You're On My Mind. You know, this is something that is still fairly new. Um, this year will mark six years since we since we launched the initiative. And it talks about the impacts of depression and stress, especially amongst men and black men and the minority population in general, but also making sure that we align ourselves with organizations so that we know the resources that's available to us, 
that we share this information with our brothers, with our families, and with the communities in general. And um, I just want to say that I notice even with it, you know, with myself, with my kids, with being in the house for almost two years straight, you know, I noticed that they were isolated and getting depressed and, you know, yeah. there was anxiety. So if, you know, if we, and we consider ourselves to be quote unquote sane or whatever, or however you want to say it, right. uh, we're struggling then, then how, you know, I can only imagine how some with mature mental health issues were. And I think when Robin Williams um, took his own life, I think that was the very first time, and, and many people have done this prior to, but I think that was the first celebrity that really, um, I was like, wow, because, you know, you're looking at someone that made you laugh, right? You enjoyed his right. movies. You always thought, you know, he was always funny. And and when he took his own life, it was like, wow, you know, you never know what's going on in what people's internal struggles are. And yep. I definitely want to make sure that we get that number posted up, that the suicide hotline number um, yes. is posted. And we want to also make sure that if anyone is struggling, that they get in contact with um, their healthcare providers. Um, we'll put the numbers up and um, and get and reach out and get the help that they need because yep. it's also it's also going uh, a lot of high school students, a lot of uh, bullying, and mm -hmm. all of these things are leading to um, you know suicide and, and mental conditions. And we right. want to make sure that we um, here on the station share and share and share. Um, and those to, to even, you know, to even piggyback on your statement about those resources and um, thank you for, you know, reminding the audience about that. Another thing that's also going to be significant is the launch of 988, you know, which will be the 911 for mental health crisis. Oh, and awesome. that is going to be um, a national hotline that in the time of crisis, anyone will be able to dial in. And so I think that's a significant step in the right direction that, you know, not only our nation is taking, but you're going to see a lot more other countries, you know, taking that same process. And then also, you know, with our local police departments, with the development of crisis intervention teams and the availability of, you know, employment um, access services and, you know, EAP and mental health services and, and different things that are being provided through organizations and employers. And then also with, within the state, you know, we have a new state bill that, is a, that has been passed that is gonna make available for resources and mental health aid for our schools to make sure that our teachers are equipped with the tools that they need to know what to do to refer students in the event of a mental health crisis to also give them the training that they need and to also make sure that, you know, we have strategies in place to support our kids. And just as you stated, this pandemic has, has really put a strain, not only on our students, but especially our educators. And so now that we're seeing more conscious efforts taken to provide funding, to have support in this capacity and to provide these resources in education and, and in all our different scopes of employment, I think it's a, a significant step in the right direction. Um, we're going to be uh, breaking in just a moment for a commercial, but we definitely want to make sure at the end we mentioned that 988, because that my, was my first time hearing about that, and mm -hmm. I'm excited. That is amazing. And is that going to, that's going to be all over the, over, all over the world, they'll be able to call 988? So, so I'm not sure if this is going to be um, global, but I know nationally it, it will be okay. our official mental health 911 number. So that will be the emergency number that you will be able to dial and um, it will be effective soon. And so I'm, I'm very excited to see that those measures are in place. What a blessing. Okay, we are going to break for a commercial. When we come back, we are gonna talk about how uh, Mr. Lewis is in educating, empowering and encouraging uh, the people that he comes in contact with on a daily basis. What is he trying to do in 2022? That is a theme for our station this year on WYTV7. Please remember to like and share this show, like and share our website. Uh, we are a nonprofit uh, local station here out of Charlotte, North Carolina, solely run on your donations, and we would appreciate that. Um, and thank you so much for tuning in and stay tuned and we'll be right back with you shortly. You're invited to the Smart Strategies for a Slim Body Masterclass hosted by Integrative Healing Arts and Simply Fit. Throughout the demonstrated masterclass, you'll learn healthy habits 
that will slim you down, like making time for exercise and finding a quiet place for meditating. Throughout the master class, you'll learn about acupuncture and sleep, as well as balanced meals and responsible snacking. For more information about the May 21st master class, just click the registration link that you see on the screen. Welcome back to the second half of In the Spotlight. I am Tabitha, and we still have with us Mr. Keon Lewis. And Mr. Lewis is going to um, share some information on this second half. Um, we're gonna pick back up with, um, first of all, the National Suicide Prevention Hotline number. We wanna make sure that we get that in your hand. And it is 1-800-273 eight two five five the national suicide prevention hotline number is one eight hundred two seven three eight two five five so please again like and share this show and share that with anyone that you feel that needs help uh keon thank you for coming back for the second half of the show thank you my question to you is, as I was stating before the commercial break, we are encouraging, empowering, and educating our guests, just just like this show, so encouraging, so empowering, um, and um, and so an educational. Um, I didn't, you know, like we didn't know about the new hotline number that's coming up for mental health. Um, that's in, that's in educating our viewers, one viewer at a time. Can you tell us in 2022, um, our theme for the station this year here at WYTV7 is I'm trying. What are you trying to get across to your platform this evening um, and beyond? I will definitely say, um... The first thing I'm trying to get across to the plat to my platform, and um, also thank you all for this opportunity to share this, is that equity isn't something that can be placed in the box. It's not a uniform definition. It is something that is gonna look different for everyone, and it takes everyone to accomplish it. And when we look at the scope of advancing health equity and you know dealing with what we like to call the social determinants of health, these are the things that impacts the way someone has access to healthcare, to education, their living environment, their neighborhoods, where they live, their socioeconomic status, et cetera. We wanna make sure that people understand that when it comes to the scope of public health and advancing health equity, it is something that incorporates all sectors, all of us, not just in the clinical state and just in public health, but it involves finance, it involves education, it involves our politics, our policies. All of these things play a significant role in advancing equity. And when we say equity, we wanna make sure that everyone gets a fair opportunity to reach their full potential, whether it's in health and finance and their jobs, their education. We wanna make sure everyone has an opportunity regardless of their race, regardless of their demographic, regardless of what neighborhood they live in or what side of the railroad tracks they're coming from, we wanna make sure that you all have that opportunity. So one of the things that I'm working diligently to do in 2022 is to make sure that I create platforms that brings together great minds and subject matter experts from all scopes of life, whether it's finance, adolescent health, maternal health, pediatrics, dental, you name it. And what I want them to do is to be able to share the things that makes them successful. What are their practices? What are the things that they're doing that helps them to look at someone, whether it's a patient, a potential client, and not utilize their unconscious bias, per se, and not judge them on how they dress or the vehicle that they pulled up in, but see them as someone who genuinely is in need of help and of support and figuring out the best way to support them. So that's the first thing I want to do for 2022 is make sure that the world and the community understands that we all play a significant part in helping to advance equity. And whether it's in your you know, respective sector of business, you do play a role and you play a significant role. And the more we have this dialogue and the more we have this conversations, then the greater steps that we can take to help improve the community. And I would probably say the second thing is, you know, as we clearly stated, the importance of mental health protect your peace, protect your mental health, value it just as much as you do, you know, as going to the gym and exercising and working out and eating right, you wanna make sure mentally you're just as right. And so when I think about the things that I do in the scope of being an advocate 
for mental health awareness and having a dialogue through AFSP and through our Project 2025 programs and, you know, and, and the Talk Save Lives, you know, initiatives. I also have to take the opportunity to give credit to people who I like to consider to be the titans of mental health. You know, I think about individuals like my brother Curtis Drafton and what he's doing for our veterans through the U.S. Veterans Hall of Fame and the initiatives that he's doing for them and enhancing them and Operation New Dawn and bringing resources to support them. I think about individuals like Carlita Victor and or Carlita Victoria you know, to make that correction. She has a phenomenal organization called the Darkness Rising Project. And she's using performing arts and Broadway and music oh, and theater and wellness workshops to talk about mental wellness and to, to bring those things to the black community. I think about individuals like my brother, JD, Jaron Doby. He's a licensed, you know, psychotherapist and a licensed clinician. And he's a WCNC contributor and talks about the impacts of you know, the, the pandemic on mental health and in the community and in our job environment. And I think about individuals like Doug Middleton, professional football player. He has an organization called Dream the Impossible where he talks to the youth and educates them on the importance of mental health awareness because he himself is someone who, who lost a friend or lost someone to suicide. So he doesn't want them to experience that. I think about individuals like Renshawn Miller, soon to be Dr. Miller, who was a licensed clinician himself for an organization called You Stress Inc., where he does phenomenal things with his Let's Talk About It uh, gala and his Let's Talk About It walk and adult coloring book nights and you know youth mentoring and all the different ways of reaching our Black community. And he's doing phenomenal things through his organization and through his nonprofit. And then of course, Fonda Bryant. And, you know, for anyone who knows anything that goes on mental health related in this area, whether it's in Mecklenburg County, throughout the state, throughout the nation, Fonda Bryant is a titan for mental health awareness. She is a survivor, um, like Renshawn Miller, who at once, at one time, was, you know, attempting to take a life. But here she is now, being a supporter, being an advocate, being a QPR instructor, which is question, persuade, refer. She started her own nonprofit organization, Wellness Action and Recovery, which is called War, Sanity Not Vanity. She's a, a you know, a national award winner. So when we think about individuals like these, these are the people who are the true titans of mental health. These are the people who motivate me and who push me to do the things that I do in this scope of work. And so when I think about their experiences, you know, their journey and their triumphs as not only clinicians, but as advocates for mental health, I'm glad we, we have individuals like that who pushes, you know, this dialogue forward because we need it, not only just in the Black community, but in the community as a whole. And so when I think about what, what we're doing in 2022 and coming out of this pandemic, these are the things that I want people to take into consideration and that I want to be a part of that dialogue. And when it comes to mental health, take value in that, protect your peace, and make sure that you take the necessary steps to ensure that mental wellness is total health wellness. This, is, this has been absolutely excellent. Uh, I am blown away by your multi-relationships with all these local services and people. And Keon, because we don't have all of their information, which I cannot wait to uh, next uh, season have some of these titans on my show. Absolutely. <laughs> you share your information <laughs> right now so people know how to get in contact with you, your handles that you are willing to share that someone can reach out to you and say, how can you put me in, in touch with, or how can I be a part of, or how can my organization link up? Share, share, share. Absolutely. So from um, social media on Instagram, feel free to reach out to me. Um, I can be reached out at uh, Cool Keon, you know, C O O L K E O N. I can be reached there. Or if you want to uh, reach out to me uh, just from a professional platform, I can be reached at kenyato.lewis at cabarrushealth.org. That's K E N Y A T O dot L E W I S at cabarrushealth.org. And um, I'm, I'm open to uh, both of those platforms. And please feel free to reach out to me to, you know, find ways that we can connect and collaborate on these great initiatives. This is excellent. This has been wonderful. I'm so excited. And if you want to reach me and want to know how you can be a part of my show 
Um, this is my last show for this season. Um, this has been an amazing ride. I'm so proud of what In the Spotlight has been able to accomplish. And I look forward to coming back in September with some more powerhouse and, and certainly some of the people that you mentioned uh, this evening. But if you want to reach out to me and you want to be a part of In the Spotlight, I'm at 98 zero nine zero seven three one three six nine eight zero nine zero seven three one three six or tabitha t-a-b-a-t-h-a spotlight at gmail.com and and like and share uh wytv7.org we are nonprofit. we are locally here in charlotte and uh like share donate donate uh, we appreciate it. We are solely run off of your love, kindness, and generosity. Now for the fun part and the end all to be all of our show. Uh, Mr. Keon, as you also have seen here on his shirt, he is a proud member of Omega Psi Phi Fraternity Incorporated. And we love our D9. I'm a member of Zeta Phi Beta Sorority Incorporated. And um, he uh, is going to be a part of, along with the rest of Charlotte, they are going to take over Charlotte in July, from July 22nd to the 26th of this year. Uh, it is an Omega Sci-Fi uh, fiasco here. The conclave is coming <laughs> to Charlotte. And uh, Keon, uh, share uh, your chapter with us um, and what you do for them on a local level. I know you've won multi awards uh, for the fraternity and also put out um, how people can uh, maybe uh, register and get involved with the conclave. Can you, are, are we allowed to do that? Okay. Yeah. We're yeah, going yeah, yeah, to Okay, we're, we're going to end out with the conclave and, and share this with every D9 member you know, share this with every Omega Sci Fi member you know. We want to get that information out there. We want to sell Charlotte out and get people registered to be a part or just come out and attend and support the event because it's not even so much about being a part of the D9. It's, right. it's, it goes deeper than that. And I'm just going to touch on this real quick. We have to remember what we were birthed out of. We were birthed mm -hmm. out of the fact that we were not able to be included in regular sorority fraternity life when you went to college. We had to create our own. So we have to be proud of the accomplishments that the D9 does. We are we serve the community. Um, all of us are built on service and, and brotherhood and sisterhood and scholarship. Uh, education is key. Um, and even when we have education in the black community, sometimes that doesn't even seem like it's enough. Um, but but you know what? We worked hard for it. And uh, we want to share that with everyone and share that with the community. And we do that through our organizations. So can you go ahead and share um, what you have for us and on Omega. Yeah, definitely. Well, uh, first and foremost, I got to give a shout out to you as well and to all of your incredible sisters of Zeta Phi Beta Sorority Incorporated. And then uh, we also got to take an opportunity to send a shout out to Sigma Gamma Rho Sorority Incorporated. They're celebrating their centennial this year. Yes, and to are. all of our brothers and sisters uh, for the Divine Nine and all of their incredible work that they do throughout the community. So, um, and you know, as you stated, I'm a proud member of the Omega Psi Phi Fraternity Incorporated, Root to the Bruz. And I have to give a significant shout out to my home chapter, the Mighty TQ Tau Maker Chapter out of Greensboro, North Carolina. Uh, we will be celebrating our centennial next year. So salute to all the bros and all of their incredible work and in exemplifying you know, our principles of manhood, scholarship, perseverance, and uplift. Um, I am the Trey Spring 05 Tau Maker Chapter, and I'm known as the Birdman. So I, I like to make sure that, you know, I work diligently in the things that I do in the community through our respective mandated programs, but spans everything from health initiatives to scholarships, along with uh, social action and all of our great tremendous projects that we do throughout the community. And as you stated, you know, from July 22nd through July 26th, we will be painting the city of Charlotte Royal Purple and Old Gold. I'm excited <laughs> to finally get the opportunity to see my brothers and to fellowship with them. Because uh, as many may not know, we did not have a conclave since 2018. Um, typically, our conclave is uh, biannually. So we had our International Leadership Conference in 2019. And as we all know, in 2020, that's when the pandemic hit. So we have not had a conclave since 2018. So it will be a massive turnout. And it will be an incredible opportunity to finally get a chance to catch up with brothers from across the globe 
and to, to be able to fellowship with them, to take care of the business of Omega, but to also make sure we leave a positive footprint in the community. Um, one of the things that you know I'm, I'm very excited to see take part in the community is our International Youth Leadership Conference. That's something that we do in conjunction with our um, international conclave and that it gives our youth, um, especially our high school youth, an opportunity to take part in activities, to engage one another, especially amongst our young men, to see us as representation of, of great men and great leaders in the community, as well as in our respective professions. And so this year, this uh, leadership conference is gonna take place on the campus of Johnson C. Smith University. So more details will be forthcoming on that. We also have you know, public uh, social action initiatives and projects that we do in which we have our own unique ways in which we give back to the community to share with them the, the great you know, 10 man mandated programs that we do and take part in um, as Omega Men and, and what we do for the community. So I'm looking forward to the way that we're gonna give back to Charlotte and our surrounding counties with that. And then also we have public programs in which you know, the community can come out to and, and be invited to, to see the scope of work that we do as Omega Men, but to also learn about the great collaborations and the great national partnerships that we have from prostate cancer awareness to mental health awareness to, to cancer prevention, all of these things, you know, we do in the scope of work and we want people to see the great things that we do as Omega Men. And then of course, you know, you have the social functions where you'll be able to come out and fellowship with us and a lot of great activities will be forthcoming down the pipeline. So, so be on the lookout for that. You know, we'll be sharing that through all of our respective social media pages. And of course, you know, through my chapter now, the most powerful Pi Phi chapter of Charlotte and just all the great work that these men are doing, you know, throughout the county and throughout the area. And, um, you know, just as you stated, I'm proud to, to say that, you know, I have been an award winner through Omega, through Superior Service, as well as an international scholarship winner. And I'm, you know, going on, you know, so this year, this will be my 17th year as a proud Omega man. And I'm glad that I'm supporting a long lineage of great men, not only, you know, the great men who have come through Omega in my family, but as well as my mentors, and other surrounding individuals who have left an incredible impact with me. It's just been a great opportunity and I'm looking forward to the great things that we're doing with Omega Sapphire and the International Conclave that's coming to Charlotte. Keon, thank you so much for being a guest. We are out of time. Thank you so much. Um, everyone, you heard it, it's out there. Uh, get locked in, get plugged in. Uh, Shout out to my own husband, who is a member of Omega Sci-Fi Fraternity Incorporated. Thank you so great much. Man right there. Thank you so much for being a part of our evening, our, our final broadcast for this season. We look forward to coming back in September and we will rerun this show. And please like and share. And uh, God bless you and all that you are doing in the community and um, love to your family. And we uh, will be signing off WYTV7.org. Check us out. Thank you Much so much. Much love to you as well. Thank you. Thank you. God bless. Have a good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining in. Thank you.